CTZ Entertainment presents Coffee Bar Stories, a talk show adjacent comedy podcast with your three hosts, Dad, Son, and Bubba. Live from the Coffee Bar, it's your DTZ News. Welcome back to the DTZ News. I'm your host, Son, and I want to throw back a reminder here to don't forget to listen to the next episode in the season, episode 8 for the information about the contest we'll be hosting. We'll give you more in-depth information about what it is and what's going on uh, once episode 8 comes out. And now we're going to throw it to Dad for some more news. Thank you, son. Do you like to write comedy skits? Or do you have comedy ideas? Well, I'd like you to send them to us. If you have ones that you've written and even go far enough to put some sound effects into it, send that along. Because I'd love to read them and actually perform them. We'd like to give them a shot. Or if you have an idea, take it a little farther. And that way, we'll give you the accolades for you writing it until everyone gets your skit and we're performing it. And I hopefully will do you well. You can even ask Bubba. We'll put our all into it. Oh, yeah, definitely. It'll and be like a community highlight and specials and events and shit like um let me go to shout out some of our lovely viewers and give them their due credit for what's good but give them their due it's, it would be great yeah I, I think it'd be fun for the people you know especially if you just you like to write them but you don't want to try to do them like how we do them I, I understand doing that. That'd be great. I think it's a good thing. Son over here, he'll tell you where to send your ideas to. And I think eventually we'll get all your ideas together. And once we get some submissions, I think we may make one full episode of all the submissions that people did for the ones that put it out there. And Son's about to tell you now how to get to that. Yeah, so you can go to our Facebook page and message the page, and you can message the idea there directly. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can go and email us, and our email is in our description of our uh, episode. If you look into the description of the of all of the episodes, you should see our email down somewhere near the bottom. You can go there and email us uh, your ideas. We'll take any and all of your skit ideas. Uh, if you want us to perform them, we'll perform them. Everyone will be used and checked into. We will pretty much use everyone. So you send them, they will get used, we promise. And this has been your DTZ News. Here's your two dad jokes. What did the ocean say to the beach? Nothing. It just waved. Why can't a nose be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. Tired of life? Can't take it anymore? Are you ready to end it all? Well, go ahead and do it. That's right. Look at it no more. No more nagging wife or bratty kids. No more bills piling up. Have no more worries. End it now with our proven system. All you have to do is send for our kit, and in no time, you'll be free of this bothersome life. See, when you send for our kit, you'll receive two expertly done ID and passports, along with three stolen credit cards. And to make this kit complete, our pamphlet, How to Fake Your Death and Disappear, where no one will find you. This pamphlet has step-by-step -step instructions. So hurry and call Help Me End My Life to get started today. Help Me End My Life is the trademark of Snowcore. Alert, alert. This is a message for all men. All right, fellas. You tired of your ex? The one who keeps stalking and harassing you? Acting like a crazy woman? Oh, brother, well, I got what you need. Now introducing, Bitch Be Gone Spray. Yeah, that's right, finally a way a man can protect themselves from those kook-ass psychotic women, and even them straight-up crazy bitches, with our patent-pended formula. We force this into a can with science and shit, all you gotta do is point and squirt. So finally you can now go up to them psycho-ass bitches, point some Bitch Be Gone Spray at them, shoot, and just like that, Poof. Bitch be gone. Now, where do they go, you may ask. And to that I say, who fucking cares? They're not harassing or bothering you anymore, and that's what you want. But, you gotta know, take this as a warning. An extremely crazy ass bitch may require a few extra squirts. We guarantee that bothersome bitch will be gone and you can finally get some peace. Bitch be gone spray is also completely environmental safe and pet friendly. And also, men, don't worry, it don't work on you guys. So if you get a little on you, you'll be a-okay. 
Bitch Be Gone Spray can be found at all your favorite stores and the internet. Get yours today. Skimic Motors, we're your family. Hello there, I'm Humphrey, the newest salesman here at Scamming Motors. They brought in the best to sell you the car you need. Folks, I'm a people person. I won't steer you wrong. You can trust me. I'm not the pushy salesman. I'm Humphrey, your friendly salesman. I have your best interest at heart. So come on in to get the right car for you. And remember, here at Scamming Motors, you're number one. Gamic Motors, located across from Hillside Mall between Hooters and Horny Jack Strip Club. And welcome back to the Coffee Bar Discussion. Uh, we're going to throw it back to Dad. He has what we're going to be discussing about today. Uh, what is it? So we talk a little bit about what it would take for us, you know, to get it, how we do our skits and get things together i thought we'd talk a little bit about that and oh that's actually some, great especially the, with what the news that we have earlier about wanting people to uh write yeah. skits for us yeah that's what i thought and about whatnot. i thought it'd be nice you know we kind of kick it off with like a little bit about how we started off this season how we we decided more from our first season was storytelling and yeah friends telling you know like the first story was such a good story told that Mm -hmm. that was one of the that one i can say keeping certain aspects out for legal reasons in that story but all was true our two dipshits trying to do construction yeah. for a guy you know we didn't know no better we just needed money and a job at the time so mm -hmm. but we morphed into what we are today with the skits and that kind of derived the doing the skit type thing it, I, it, I came up with that kind of off the top of my head one day and then you just we just kind of rolled with it it made it it made things a lot easier to be honest uh because though i um, in, in this i guess this discussion is also a little behind the scenes look of what uh season one and season two now how differ a little yeah. our thoughts on it but to really pull out of why we started doing the skits though is kind of because we realized we couldn't continue with the format we had for season one because while it kind of worked for us it it wasn't easy for us to keep up with and yeah we ran through friends we yeah we were running we, we, we tried to continue to bring in people to interview to help with the stories and whatnot but the way we run the show and everything and how we don't really use real names real places we try to keep all that out to protect people and whatnot and yeah. to stay anonymous it, a lot of the people we were bringing on uh you wouldn't believe how many retakes we've had to do yeah. in some of the episodes and this is not to bash any of them it, it's really hard to jump into to, to like a format that we had going and to uh like try to do all the whole anonymous thing especially yeah. when oh you're coming to a podcast you automatically assume oh i can just talk about what i wanted to talk about yeah yeah we um, never we yeah the language we didn't restrict it was just you you had to not give away a lot of landmarks because where we live a lot of people know by now we live around a lot of landmarks yeah and pretty much they they have by this point mm -hmm. in time have narrowed down where we're pretty much oh at. probably they ain't figured out our town so to speak no. they got our region yeah. very well yeah taken but, in, but for the most part we we decided that instead of trying to keep up with that format and try to keep up with the interviews and the guests and all that stuff, try to do skits. Like, as Dad said, he came up to me with the idea and was like, well, I mean, we're pretty good at, like, goofing off when we're getting stoned or whatnot, and half of this shit could be just a skit in itself. Why don't we try taking a crack at writing them? And so I said... Yeah. Fuck the commercials, yeah. that, 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 was yeah. a big, that was a big kicker off was a commercial. Oh, definitely. Because I, I kind of threw it at you as something. I wrote something stupid and threw it at you, and then we worked it. Oh, definitely. And, and for whatever reason, uh, the, uh, we, we're still doing them now. I mean, we, we do them every single episode, actually. Uh, is the uh, the commercial skits. I, I, whatever reason, we find them the funniest, I think. Yeah, they're keep the doing them. They're, uh, they're the easiest they're, to they're, pick it, on. It really is. It's, yeah. it's the easiest thing to make is to come up with a, some weird-ass product and come out like in five minutes with a one minute skit i well, find it i I, f I find that the the breath and the, the being able to do it so quickly uh and especially just a little bullshit thing that we throw together yeah. like the bitch be gone spray we just did in this episode just being able to look through it the, the amount of times me having to redo it and just laughing yeah. every time 
it's 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 fun. It's great. It's a, it's a great thing to do with the skits. I really enjoy them. Well, you know how I got started in skits, honestly, is I went to Catholic uh, school up into uh, I think eighth grade, and then after eighth grade, it is your high school for us. We don't have a junior high in Catholic school. Okay. Yeah. But in uh, Catholic school, we I think it was my seventh or eighth grade year. You you had to come up with like a commercial type deal and do it like a presentation type deal. Well. I couldn't think of much. I was sitting around and I always was big into beer signs and stuff like that. That was kind of the thing in my ear. It was beer was like a big staple around where we lived. So I'd uh, come with this commercial. I had these posters of half naked girls and I got a Bud Light can. And they were both like workout girls. They had muscles and whatnot. And uh, nun, she let me do it too. <laughs> so, or, well, she was a nun, man. I'm sorry. The sister, Sister Jackie. She let me do it. The commercial, the way I remember it went, I was, it started out going, I'm holding up a can of uh, Bud Light, and I was like, well, I was talking to Mr. Budweiser, and I told him how good Bud Light is and how much my friends like it, and I was pointing to the two posters. And I said, they like, except for how they, how much they like it, except for they said, the, the hole's too small and it pours too slow. That's what it is. He said, so I suggested this to you know, and ripped off the can mm -hmm. top, and I said, now they're happy, you know, with it bang open that was my first commercial and i'm sure i, I slaughtered it because you had to see it I, there was <laughs> it was visual along with yeah you know saying things but you gotta remember <laughs> i'm like hell seventh grade probably 14 so yeah you know between puberty and wanting to be a party animal that that I have no idea what that really meant back then just because it was plugged in movies and <laughs> commercials. That was my very first commercial. That's or cool. fake commercial I wrote was one of those trying to be funny. <laughs> How I talked to Mr. Bo I didn't even know who Mr. Anheuser Busch or whatever it was. Yeah, see it's different for me for getting into this is see where is it, it for those two it's they're very creative. <laughs> That's what you Whereas think. Whereas <laughs> I am not. I'm not like super creative. and But when I do have some creative thoughts and ideas, they usually tend to be quite banger ones if I might go out a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Yep. You come out with some really good stuff. <laughs> and I'm also quite the showman. Yeah. That's I'd... where I come in. Is I, When I was younger, one of my first jobs was a magician. Yeah. See, so I the... got, kind of got introduced on how to be dramatic in the yep. effect that's like, why we really early that's on. why we brought you, wanted to bring you on this season to start the second season since we were do like we've been talking about how we went into this whole new thing i knew that bringing you on that's more with the you want to do voice talent and stuff and all that other stuff and plus you already have performed so you don't have that where we're gonna have to do a hundred takes because you keep mumbling yeah. and fumbling you <laughs> felt like right in place mm -hmm. and writing skits it's easy with us you, mm -hmm. when we're spitfire and, i'm good at playing the character <laughs> <laughs> and writing yeah. script uh, writing skits especially is really easy with us especially since uh half of the time it's uh we're coming up with the dumbest ideas ever and it, if it makes us laugh there we go that's yeah. all we need the Biggest, biggest issue we we have is yeah me and some will sit there and we'll uh be just talking and stuff and then we'll we'll just start spit firing out different uh ideas for this skit you know and that skit we never get no farther than just writing down the name of the title and a, a brief explanation about what we would like to do with it oh and, definitely and stuff and we probably have many oh we 10, have 10 15 sitting oh idle. yeah like right now we have so many just i i have Quite a few different skits i, I want to turn into like a skit series uh for the uh, for, for the podcast uh we don't have uh, a shortness of script of skits uh no. let's just put it like that um we have an excess and that excess is just going to certainly grow um anything and everything <laughs> that we can think of or i can think of or dad does i just we just write it down at this point because some way somehow we'll find a way to expand on it and make it funny yeah, we're getting bad about the uh, forgetting. Right. Oh, forgetting and writing oh, yeah. it down. Time. We're doing yeah. A lot of and it's it is a lot of pot on my end and, <laughs> and stuff too. Shit, we, me too. We, we've been under a lot of stress lately. Oh. We've increased a lot of our pot smoking to compensate. Yeah, it doesn't and help. That the the good thing is, ass. well, I don't. I haven't drank in years and years and years. Good thing we aren't heavy drinkers yeah, in our no. family, so that way at least the pot. But so with us being forgetful, 
extra we, we kind of had to compensate with the <laughs> note yeah, writing yeah. which i'm hoping that that is something we should i definitely want to keep up and expand and learn to do excel sheets to help with some of our skits yeah that's a big thing for me definitely need to find uh one thing system. i will say with the whole because we already went on a huge oh, tangent about what this whole discussion was about. Was it just about like the whole background of the skits? Anyway, we uh, that's what we're talking about. How we do okay, our skits. Okay, so then we get, we didn't go off on the tangent. No, we're not. But the biggest problem for us, I think, with skits is more so finding our way to organize our thoughts. Because it's not like as we when we say we're writing them down. It's not like we're writing them all down in the same notebook, organizing all of this stuff no. for us to come back to later. We have like 36 million different types of uh, like little legal pads we're writing down. They're constantly getting uh, lost. We're constantly ripping the page out and uh, putting oh, it somewhere and forgetting file. it. We got, we have an organization hell problem here, but <laughs> that's that's an us problem. We got to maybe move it towards digital or something else there. But writing skits is not as bad as you might think it might be to be honest as long as you can keep up with an idea it's usually just find your seed find your scenario what you want to go for so yeah. okay you got two guys at a bar all right uh start thinking about what's around them that you might think could happen that you can throw into the, to make it funny like maybe there's a bar fight going on or something or maybe they get put into a bar fight and that's why it's funny it, you gotta kind of do a no holds bar kind of thing with it and try to see what you can do com comedically with the skit that yeah i it's like i told you guys i throw it against the wall and see what sticks and and like i told you i don't mind anything i write i don't mind if the boys change it mm -hmm. because it's i'm just giving you the gist of, of a lot of it especially ads ads are are real ones that they can work with on their own for their personality or or a character they may want to create out of that ad but skits is more that one i kind of work on before we get into doing it with them how they want to read it and write it and stuff i try to give them heads up because to write it afterwards and then change it after we've done everything yeah. because it, then it may change the whole flow of it oh so, yeah, yeah so that's something that we kind of work on in the beginning they'll get better as we go along once we we're looking at it trying to find a certain groove and once i think we accomplish that the episodes will even be even more flow flow yeah i guess is how i want it. you know it yeah. flows but i want it's like a complete go through no mishaps and the editing is where i gotta really work on that some more yeah but that's just a whole technical background i've basically. noticed a bad habit that i've got is uh especially with how i'm i'm saying i want to be a voice actor and shit is i like default between like three or four voices yeah you, you gotta <laughs> find your niche man you gotta find you know, also find your niche but you gotta find a way to expand yeah uh, it, I, I have the same problem too so it's it's not your fault i have like two voices max that's a that's a thing that that's why I got I knew you were in the voice acting and stuff and wanted to do that so I'm figuring you were gonna look into deeper how to you know it's how it works the and maybe it's a whole mental process I don't know I'm gonna have to co go at it better the best make best thing better to do is probably YouTube it man try to learn how to do ver certain voices and then like maybe try said. to you know like learn how to do like an obama voice or something or maybe uh yeah, the, you, clint eastwood and then <laughs> you know just any type of famous person voice try to learn yeah. how to mimic theirs and then try to transform that's the best that way to that's else. the best way to do it too or well some might argue because people because it, 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 for me that's an easy way to do it like yeah. okay I've always wanted to do a, wanted to do a Christopher Walken impression. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. I like the way Christopher Walken speaks. <laughs> well, yeah, see now that that's probably one of the uh, most mimic voices around is his because he's it's there's really no one to sound like. Yeah, and it's his cadence mm -hmm. is just so different. <laughs> oh, but it also helps make dramatic scenes even more dramatic though when he does when he delivers it with like uh with like wrath or something or even threatening it, it the way he talks helps deliver it uh, yeah a lot of people say to go like oh try to mimic your favorite character's voices but i feel like that's so hard to do because it can't characters voices are not like natural voices that you can like kind of morph your voice into that's something you gotta like form hard yeah you, you have gotta to, like think hardcore, about like i got the, some way somebody explained it to me uh i asked someone for tips and they said that you pretty much have to get in the mindset of that character mm -hmm. 
and just use that character's voice to the best of your ability yeah. as often as you can. Well, see, I was also kind of hoping with the way I write these skits and or all of us and get into some of these skits and as we get farther along and really push into more, uh, I ain't going to say storyline, but they kind of flow one after another so to speak with each other i want to try to really you create a character out of it and then yeah. run with that character but i want you to be able to develop that character for the skits like that are going to be part one part two part three yeah. part four of yeah. the same ones and be able to master that person to where you can do it without worrying about you listen to episode this one and then the next episode okay there's a difference in the that same character's voice is that that's the one thing i'm hoping that we kind of master up on that and i figured you will be the one to help me and uh I could, son yeah. over there to do it yeah yeah because uh I mean, i'm trying my best i mean you've you've seen me with our uh, call of cthulhu because i know i try with the accents but yeah I'm not you're the actually best pretty decent at a brooklyn ish <laughs> i'm, accent. Well, uh, I'm and, surprised about that but that's um, pretty cool i know one of the accents that comes easiest to me is western well, everybody, yeah, everybody you. tries to go to southern shit, the yeah, yeah, southern yeah, rail. Well, no. I can go. Yeah, I feel see. like I sound like Forrest Gump when I try to do it, and I feel like I'm offending so Bubba. many people. <laughs> well, my mine's all Should over. I? My country can go all over the place when I. Yeah. But with my southern, I, I don't even. It even also know helps you grow around southern. that type of uh, uh, those types of people with well, the, the voice I'm, and yeah. whatnot, so you're able to easily pick it up where we weren't. A yeah. lot of long drawled and yeah, I mm -hmm. yeah we we have family members that got some deep deep. That's easy to pick up though. Yeah, uh, yeah. If, especially as old as I am, like the early years growing up as a kid, most of the stuff was westerns and TV shows like the uh, what is it Lone Ranger and stuff like that. It yeah. was, uh, a lot of it is, is southern talk, hee haw. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff is country. I, I'll say country folk talking. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain because you get a mixture of okay. real southern to yeah. It's For it's non, hard. To, it's hard. For to our non-American listeners, uh, the way dialects are in the states is uh, like let's say Alabama Southern compared to like Georgia Southern oh, it's not yeah. going to sound the same. Yeah, you, oh, it's completely different. It's it, it's weird. <laughs> it, it's getting to the point to where even uh, in the same state different counties seem to have their own accents and whatnot. Yeah, I mean it, it's culture bleeding into one another and all that, but yeah. it's you, it's you really think it, at that point you think it'd be a little easier to, for like everyone to help you try to pick up like a different accent for voice acting and whatnot for the ones that do it, it, it for the, all the double figures culture around them it'd be easy enough for them to be like okay I'll go find someone like, that has that thick southern drawl listen to them talk for a bit I can mimic that I, I can tell you one thing in general just period anybody who knows how to pick out dialects like that automatically can already assume what our dialect is just oh, yeah. oh yeah, definitely. Hard North uh, the, the fucking Midwesterner, is that what we would all in this area be considered? Uh, yeah, we're yeah, we're considered. Yeah, so we say y'all a lot too. That's a good uh, y'all. It's like the way we say soda country versus and pop. city talk mixed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah. Here we, we say soda. Where you guys used to live, they say pop. But oh yeah, and I really in certain areas I know it's called soda pop. And mm -hmm. it's how they refer to it as. Oh, yeah. Pop, so. There's even and then some areas some where they just, just straight up call it Coke. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I was about to say, some people just call it Coke or Cola. Yeah. Yeah. See, now, that's that's, like, Coke. that's where it comes in for writing skits is terminology we use for things will tell you where we're from. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. You know? Now, if I'm trying to get silly and pick on something, which I'm doing it in a lighthearted manner now, then, yeah, you'll be like, boy, they're trying to... You know they're not from there because they're just slaughtering. Oh, that. definitely. <laughs> one I thing get we're it, not they're good trying, with. but they're slaughtering it. Yeah, one thing we're not good with is uh, keeping with the theme of something sometimes. We we'll yeah. like to break out, and uh, all of a sudden you're like, well, it was focused on this, and then all of a sudden he started sounding like he was from Alaska or something. It was really, really weird, man. Yeah, we'd lose, yeah. And, and I noticed in our skits, too, I've done that, where I've written the skit, and all of a sudden as I'm listening to us doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I, lo I I trailed off there for a minute. Oh yeah, and it doesn't we'd help. We'd fix it, and the, of course, our biggest gets problem done. here with skits is that we try to write a structure for it. We try to write out the skit and everything, and the minute we have our script for it, uh, we improvise. We we already knew from the get go we were probably going to improvise most of the skit, but we still ultimately assume that we have to write so much for the script. Yeah. yeah. 
And then in, 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 in the end, you hear us, uh, what you hear for the skit uh, when it comes out in episodes and what we had written down are com- two completely different things. <laughs> so, At that point, we so probably could have, uh, we could probably release both of them. One that's a straight read from the script and the skit itself that was improvised and you'd be like, what do they do? Record two, two different commercials? Different what was that? Get two completely different productions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's sometimes. It, it, sometimes we stick straight to it, though, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, sometimes well, we do. Well, I mean, well, with me, on my end of writing the script, so with the grammar, I try to, I don't know, from it being drilled in, trying to do grammar correctly and writing it and all that. Yeah. Which, which I appreciate. I, which needs to be, a lot of times, got to be beaten up because it doesn't work with it. You get what I'm doing, so that's why for you guys, you understand how I do things and how I work and I've talked with you about it. But a lot of, it, it, for somebody coming in to do something with this, I'd have to really, we'd have to all show them how I do things sometimes because I do the grammar correctly, but it don't need to, but you don't do it that way. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be slaughtered sometimes to make it, that's why it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. And I have a real, it's hard for me to not do it the right way. Yeah, sometimes uh, it, it's really, and, and you wouldn't really think about this when you're writing out skits and all that. You're like, well, well, I'll just write how I think or how I talk or whatnot like that. But uh, sometimes you gotta, you really do gotta write it down as grammatically correct as you possibly can and all that because when you go back to go and put your own spin on it and everything and or go read it out straight, you're still trying to do that voice, you're still trying to do that accent, so you gotta think, if you're tripping up on them words because of how you wrote it, or if, and say you, how you write, like you don't ever use contractions, so instead of your, it's always you are. If uh, that's tripping you up, you gotta make sure you're really grammatically correct, because you don't want to trip up when you're write, or reading through your script. Well, Retaking I, sometimes is... If I don't write it out correctly, I, lo- I get lost in it mm-hmm. when I'm trying to read it that, out. That's another because thing. Because I, I forget what I meant. Because yeah. you figure, these are not being done right in real... I may be look, write, and write it one day and re-look at it two days, three days later, maybe a week later. Who mm-hmm. knows? Visit maybe something I set off to decide to work on it again later on. Yeah. And, and it's stuff. not like we're and over now here. I'm like, what the hell was I writing? I don't get what I mean meant in it plus the misspellings or if i hand read it if i because I, i'll go between printing and cursive back and forth back and forth so much mm. between it it's hard to tell sometimes what i was meaning and what i was getting at it also doesn't help that when we write our skits it's never we never uh, edit past the initial rough draft uh if we do it's only because uh maybe we had to revise something because we completely butchered half of what we were spelling out we didn't check it oh, we yeah. had to reprint we don't really do uh, that's why i gotten into typing them out now. yeah we don't really go past rough edits sometimes it will with the and I, I brought it up a little earlier how i have a bunch of uh, skit series kind of written mm-hmm. out or uh, outlined those ones i'm probably gonna have to go through and make quite a few different revisions to a script for it it's not gonna make any sense because as you said we don't we don't write them all the time sometimes we do but we don't always just write them the same day we're trying to record them no we'll, we'll write them and then maybe a few weeks will go by get back to it and we'll completely forget the context yeah. of some of the lines we're not going in depth when we write it down with context and maybe that's uh us problem where we got to figure out a better way of writing scripts but oh, yeah. you gotta you gotta make sure that if you're writing down a script and it's it's really weird and out there out there and weird even when you're reading it but when you know the context while you're reading it and makes it funny you go back to it a few days later and lost that context and it's out oh, yeah. there and weird you're like why was this funny <laughs> i can't yeah. remember yeah. Like, oh I, if <laughs> me and son are fucking if we think it's kind of fucking stupid oh damn oh. You know it's been too long, and we we <laughs> oh, definitely, butchered it for some. Oh, well, we'll some run reason. a joke into the ground, and then while it's in the ground, we'll take the fork, start beating that horse <laughs> until there's nothing left, and then play with its bones afterwards. Yeah, and, and then so we for find us it to stupid. say something oh. stupid, you, it's really been ran through. <laughs> So. <laughs> I don't know, but we I like writing. I do like writing the skits. They're fun, I really, and I like watching you guys help me uh, perform them and stuff. I think the, 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 my absolute favorite thing about writing skits is when we don't tell each other what we're writing down. Say we, uh, we're thinking Oh, because we're skit. giggling? Yeah, we're over here writing down, say something else, <laughs> prepping for an episode or something like that. No, say I wrote a script or something. And then I go out to read it to them, and they're all they can do is just gasp for air and basically are crying from both their legs and their eyes. I know I did something right. 
Uh, basically, if you could get your uh, the people you work with to laugh their ass off, you probably got a golden skit right there. That's my absolute favorite thing is when I can get you guys to bust out laughing when after I'm done finished with the script and reading it out to you guys. Just as long as we can deliver them, good. That's pretty. Oh, absolutely. You know. yeah. That's a big problem too. <laughs> Sometimes the worst part I think is when you know how you want to get a line delivered and you've tried like so many different takes, and it's not because you can't, but for sure, whatever reason, you just keep fucking that take up. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it gets a little too personal. Yeah. <laughs> you of all people here. are actually pretty good at selling a joke. Who, me <laughs> you, <laughs> you. Oh, I have to. At so after so many years of my life of people looking at me weird after I busted a joke out that only I thought was funny, you got to find a way to either push it a little further to make everyone laugh, or at the very least, you just got to keep going with it's it. It's all in the delivery. Yeah. yeah. Well, you figure you, a you're either before your time or b. You just hadn't perfected the, your delivery yet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm an equal opportunist uh, comedian. Uh, anything and everything. And that goes for me, too. If you want to make fun of anything and everything, go as well. Sometimes there's a joke that even I'm just like, all right, it's done. I don't know. There's, on, there's only a few of them. But for, uh, sometimes I do get to the point where, all right, this joke's done. We got to just shelve this. Don't touch it ever again. Keep it that way. I may have been funny in a past life. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yes. I, I, he was like, I'm funny exactly. adjacent. All right, with that funny announcement, we'll go ahead and let our uh, listeners move on to some commercials and then uh, to the next segment. Yeah, this this might have been the most discussioniest discussion of a segment yeah. they've ever listened to in their life. Because <laughs> usually we're always rumbling or rambling through our discussions, but and ending it quickly. But we got a full discussion here. Ain't yeah. that a treat for you guys? <laughs> we'll see you all in the next segment. Join us Monday nights on the Roller Radio Show, putting independent music in the listeners' ears. DJ CO1 and DJ Craig Allen. It's where the hits just keep coming. DTZ Entertainment, the producers of podcasts such as Coffee Bar Stories and Stories That Are Made Up. The DTZ Entertainment guys would like you to visit them at. Facebook at the Facebook.com DTZ Entertainment, YouTube at YouTube.com slash at DTZ Entertainment, and finally our website at DTZ Entertainment.com. Now, was that a good idea? Assault charge for woman and poultry pummel. February 2nd, a Minnesota woman was jailed for domestic assault after allegedly clobbering her boyfriend in the head with a whole chicken. According to cops who reported that the victim still had some chicken residue in his hair when they reported to the 911 calls for assistance, the victim told cops he was driving home late night to the residence he shared with Natalie, 36, when he was attacked. The man, who had been at a bar with Natalie, said she was hitting him and spitting in his face. As they en route home, upon arrival there, the residence, the man alleged Natalie hit him with a whole chicken in the back of his head. According to the probable cause statement, victim still had chicken residue in his hair, police noted. When cops sought to place Natalie under arrest, she struggled with them and began pulling her hands away from the officers, requesting multiple attempts to get her handcuffed. While being escorted from the home, Natalie reportedly continued yelling, attempting to pull her arms away from officers as she kicked her legs around. Charged with domestic assault and obstructing police, both misdemeanors, Natalie was booked into the jailhouse. Natalie was arrested on December 21st for assaulting the same man identified as victim in in the incident according to the misdemeanor case the court records for the whole chicken they did not bring up whether it's cooked or raw she's now waiting for her case to go to court now was that a good idea you think
A Kentucky woman who stabbed her male cousin during a dispute over a borrowed sex toy has been sentenced to 12 months behind board, according to record. Crystal, 34, was sentenced yesterday in circuit court connected to last year's assault of Michael, who police identified as Crystal's cousin and neighbor in Lexington. Police were dispatched to Crystal's home after she called 911 to report that she had stabbed Michael when a cop had arrived at the residence. Crystal was sweeping the porch according to court citation. Crystal told police Michael had come to her home and they had got into an argument over a sex toy. Crystal had borrowed the adult item from Michael and he wanted it back. The sex toy is not further described in the court record. After telling Michael to leave her property, Crystal grabbed a knife and reportedly leapt towards Michael and stabbed him in the arm and drew some blood. When police contacted Michael, he, he only had a few minor cuts to his armpit and his arm in his back. He confirmed the pair had gotten into an argument over a sex toy, adding that he went to leave when Crystal began acting crazy. At that point, Crystal stabbed him and Michael who declined the um, trick. Following the arrest for felony assault and several misdemeanor reports, Crystal was booked into the detention center where she spent eight months in custody before was able to post a $10,000 bond. Now, was that a good idea? Sounds like to me he could have used some bitch be gone spray. Dad's life advice. Silence is often misinterpreted but never misquoted. Business always before pleasure. Money makes the man. Put your hands together for Bubba's Corner. And here's your host. Hey everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about a requested movie that <laughs> dad happened to request. The movie is totally baked. It is a stoner comedy. I'd argue it's an informal stoner comedy. Um, oh, rather short, uh, like an hour and a half long. Um, I didn't exactly catch the year, but it is, I want to say, rather dated. Like how oh. dated are we talking? It's, well, DVD. It's well, well no doubt, but... It, I want to say early 2000s. I, it's... It came out in uh, 2007. Oh yeah, that's that's. that's I had it on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 2007, 2008. So that's about there. four years away from being 20 years old. So I want to go ahead and put on the record that this movie was very, very jumpy. <laughs> it was great. Um, it consisted of many skits, some of which reminded me a lot of what we do here. Um, and there was also a stand up. There were a plethora of just yeah, it was jokes everywhere. and stuff. Um, so the main story premise of it was this guy he's just normal dude um he is having a reunion with his debate team and he gets a knock at the door answers it and a dude with a, a lady with a gun and some dude with the gun burst in with his friends and they are talking about laying low or something and then a, it shoots to the news station on a tv and explaining about how these two people just got away with uh, some of the best weed possible, right? Yep. And it was for uh, cancer patients. And the cops were trying to take it. So the these robbers are actually medical marijuana activists. Okay. Who are who took the weed and are laying low? Yeah, for they a while. robbed a medical lab. <laughs> Science. Lab. Oh, I've definitely never seen this movie then. But anyway, it goes through a bunch of commercials and skits. It has a whole like intro scene to it that's pretty great. It's got a nice uh, theme song. Maybe the editors will throw a little taste of that up. Oh yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll we'll see if we can get that in there. Throw it up good three, four, or five seconds of it in there. But anyway, it, it goes through and introduces Dave and his debate team that show up, and 
they're all like super anti pot. And then all of a sudden, knock on the door, Dave answers it. It's his, I want to say ex wife because he lives alone. There ain't no way this man has a wife. It's his ex wife, yeah. His ex wife and his daughter, who she brought over to hawk off on him. And she's grounded because her mom caught her with a joint. Yup. And she's sitting there freaking out, like, it's not even mine. It's not even mine. Besides, you're just bringing me here to go hang out with Johnny Horsecock or whatever. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the guy that, yeah, over embellished. Yeah, and throughout this, the mom's talking about how she's going to go drinking and doing stuff like that and then they're sitting there down in weed the whole time she need no, no how yeah she talks about how she needs uh a drink and then she lights up a cigarette and the whole and I, yeah the, the, yeah the spoof of the movies basically the he's thing. throwing up statistics with yeah everything. they're throwing up statistics then i didn't bother to write them down because by now um, they have most definitely changed oh, oh yeah, by, no, definitely. yeah by now. but yeah i mean it, it was spot on at it, first time yeah. It was hitting the nail on the head. It was slapping around the culture of the time oh, by yeah. showing its hypocrisy against to mm-hmm. what it can be, you know, look at it now. Yeah, and it, they had like uh, how many deaths caused by cigarettes and how many deaths caused by alcohol mm-hmm. per year. The next scene it goes into is about some uh, company called Fun Onion. <laughs> They're selling poorly, like really poorly. So the, the leader of a Mr. Funyun brings in uh, a marijuana like specialist doctor, like went to college for it. Her name's Dr. Willis, a PR agent, Mr. Goldman, to help sell the sales, to help get it. And they, they come together and decide in order to get the rise of the Fun Onions to the price to rise, mm-hmm. they have to get more people to smoke weed because oh, the more people smoke weed, the more they have the munchies and they eat fun onions. <laughs> I finally got that. <laughs> I'm not the brightest. I'm sorry about that. So the reason they have the PR agent there is is so they can find a way to get fun onions to sell, right? Yeah. So he says, we can, what we're going to do is we can take the weed and say that uh, they're, they're striking out at Bible Belt people at this point. Okay. <laughs> And they're saying we can, uh, cause because Christians will do anything to keep their kids from being gay. Yeah. So we could say that smoking, uh, that getting high, smoking pot, reduces homosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, and their philosophy was is if you say that, the parents be scorned for the kid. <laughs> Shit. And so that was their whole idea was to get the con- the, the whole Bible thumpers to all start getting high and getting their kids high and shit. Fuck yeah. So that way they can buy the hell out of Funyuns. Hell yeah. I need this DVD when we're done with this recording. Uh, it, oh, it's great. You got to watch it. Um, it's And then up next, it's it, it's going through a whole plethora of skits like the farmer skit with the yeah. fake weed, the fake weed farmer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He... Uh, the whole premise of the skip was that if they legalize marijuana, he grows that fake hemp. Oh, wait. wait, wait. Uh, he smokes, or he grows hemp, no THC in it. looks like marijuana, oh, but okay, no okay, THC. Okay. And it's legal pot, it's what it is. And and he's talking about if they legalize it, he, he's gonna you know, put them out of business. And all his, him and his like 37 me. other people, 37 other Farmers, <laughs> yeah, and he'll have to kill his family. No. And he's sitting there with a the shotgun, <laughs> and he's got the family behind him and the wife. Yeah, it, it, yeah. If you legalize pot, I'll have to kill my family because I can't afford to no longer afford to feed and him. And he's sitting there, stuff. tears welling I mean, up. Really, he's got three kids. One of them's pregnant, and one of them isn't even top. white. Yeah. <laughs> one of them was like. A Hispanic chick, a Hispanic kid, and she's pregnant. I was like, this is the most Alabama-looking shit. (laughs) But after that, it goes up uh, back over to Dave and his little debate team, and they're trying to come up with a plot on how to get rid of the... uh, yeah, th- they're because they're being dealers. held hostage. Yeah, because they're being held hostage by these guys. Um, they decide to come up with a plot, and they're like, oh, we can just tell them the error of their ways. Oh, yeah, they're trying to go through debate shit. It's yeah. funny. So one of the guys walks up to him, and he was like, yeah, I don't think smoking pot's very good. And he, they're trying to go through all this bullshit, and he offers him a beer. The, yeah. the One of the drug guys, yeah, I think his name was Doug, offers uh, the debate guy, I think his name's Kevin, a beer. He's like, sure. And he takes it and he drinks it. And he's explaining how weed that he's got is, uh, they took it so that way the cops don't take it because it was used for cancer patients. And he spiked 
Kevin's drink with Epicac. Oh, God. So Kevin's over here getting, like, freaking out, getting ready to puke, all nauseous. He's like, which we think uh, shows what it's like to be on chemotherapy. The, uh, nause- the uh, nauseousness you get yeah. from chemotherapy. And he's sitting there and he's puking and he's like, now you can have this pill or this pill or this pill. And he's talking about all these, like, actual, like, pills. It, it's Yeah, it's the drugs that like, they give you and their side effects. He tells them... It- just breaking down and then he says you know you can smoke pot and it don't yeah and then, yeah and then he says here or he's like all the legal ones uh those are all your legal options to help with the he's like i don't care i don't care give me anything and so he goes all right and he gives him the bong and that's great from there that's one guy uh the big guy he ends up getting high and he meets the narrator (laughs) yeah he can see the narrator because of the potty smoke yeah only uh you can only see the narrator if you're high (laughs) even further down in the movie it goes through some more skits and stuff uh i didn't write them all down because that felt like a very just bad idea oh i appreciate that <laughs> well the, uh, the the movie the way they did it, it a lot the skits are pretty much for time based yeah for its era and it, it's hitting what's going on i i can't really say at the moment at the moment but more for what's been building up to that time and yeah stuff. i know uh one of the skits i didn't write down but i did want to comment on was the president one with the kids <laughs> and she's sitting there and trying to say how bad uh we smoking pot is and she's getting pissed off and you've got the uh, guard, the uh, guards for the president's wife or whatever. They're sitting there and they're like, uh, "Yeah, the first lady's off on uh, the alcohol and Vicodin again." <laughs> yeah, <they're... laughs> and she's sitting there freaking out, running around, bitching about weed and stuff. Oh yeah, she was big, big pusher against it and everything, but against pot and everything. But here she is doing pills and everything yeah and then the, uh, the first lady's who she is and in in that to be. in that skit they uh reference how uh the forefathers of our country all grew marijuana and then the first lady's like oh yeah well they had slaves too and i will not and she's just going off about that i was like it has nothing to do with marijuana and that's literally what the kid said he's like but that all has literally nothing to do with marijuana <laughs> yeah I did, they, they they stuck it to a lot of the bullcrap arguments of its era yeah, so now it's pretty late in the movie, and the debate team, minus what I say, Kyle, or I think his name was Skip. It could be, because they, they also did, like, interviews with, like, real potheads. Oh, yeah, they did interviews with real stuff. Like, one too. dude was crying about how, you know, when you hit... Now, this, I'll tell you now, all these people are full of shit. They either, A, made it up for this show and was following the script, because these dudes were not really like this because it's not true. There's no way that you're so down and out, so hard up, that you drink your bong water. Yeah, okay, yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's bullshit. I'll tell what? you that right I'm now. So I don't know I'm sorry, what? anybody that's ever been, I cannot find pot nowhere in, in his, you know, that's junkie status. Yeah, he I'm was sorry. like a pair of, it was like, what was it, Pot Smokers Anonymous or something like yep. that. And the, one of the first dude to drink his fucking bong water, he was just that fucking he goes, down for you it. Know when you're at, you know when you're at your lowest is when you drink your bong. He was no. like, who Ew, the fuck no. drinks their bong juice? And then he said something about him drinking his bong juice. Nobody drinks their bong Or no, he's like, I make tea out of it. What, no. about, what about the guy in the hot tub? Oh. <laughs> the stoner, he wakes up and calls his buddy about the weather station. Yeah. Hey, man, what, 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 what's the weather like in Seattle? Oh, wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's like, just... <laughs> because marijuana just helps the boring seem not so boring. Yeah, it makes the boring less boring you're like dude he's so baked (laughs) but it's pretty late into it now and the debate team's trying to come up with a whole nother plot to try and get rid of these uh uh act the potheads right but meanwhile they're sitting there plotting their idea they're all nomming on some brownies (laughs) and finally one of them finally says that these are some good brownies who made these and everybody's like not me and then uh doug one of the uh the activist the dude activist he goes up in there he's like He's like, oh, I thought I'd make my own little contribution to the beer, to the barbecue. <laughs> they were God. they were pot brownies, and yes. everybody oh, got God. freaking stoned so off. You have ass. an opinion about something you've met, you have no idea about. 
you never done. Might as well let you uh, do it so you can formulate an actual opinion. Yeah, so they uh, they all end up getting really freaking stoned. Basically, nothing that bad happens. They have a good old time. Yeah, they 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 have like a whole nother party. What stoner fl- film isn't complete without naked chicks? There's an entire scene about naked chicks. <laughs> that, <laughs> are, oh, that are talking philosophy. Yeah, they're talking philosophy. Uh, they're debating, I think. Um, yeah, they're it's it's like um, astrophysics or something. Yeah. It, it's physicists. That's yeah. what they are. They're they're two physicists. Bomb body. He's in, yeah, and, and they're and just breasts, you know, there beautiful the pool, breasts. And, and the, you've got the debate team guys sitting there just perving on them. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they're just, oh, and, they're, and you know, they're they're talking. Oh yeah, because the guys are like, we think they're talking about like hair and what hair. And then when you talk, when yeah. you zone in on what they're really talking about, they're talking about physicists. They're, yeah, you know. Yeah, they're talking about like space science and, and shit. It jumps to another skit after this. So it, like it starts rapidly closing. The movie starts rapidly closing after this. I want to say it was Martha Stewart because there ain't no way they weren't not trying to make that be Martha Stewart. <laughs> oh, with the drugs? Yes, with the OD. That was Martha Stewart. Yes, with OD recipes. With spoon. Oh God. <laughs> They, and they uh, essentially what it was that whole point of, of that was to inform about how much of said drug could cause an overdose. Okay, yeah, yeah as compared heroin, to weed, crack, cocaine, whatever. Yeah, it was like coke, heroin, uh, meth, meth. There's a few other things that she they had named a whole all. like bunch of them on a tray. Yeah, okay. and then she was talking about how bad it would be to make an OD recipe for weed for weed because you can't OD on weed. In fact, it would take 250,000 pounds. No, oh, yeah. There's and you'd no have to way. smoke it all within 15 minutes. Yeah, there's no way that's yeah, happening. Yeah, it's yeah, the consumption level of the of the THC through smoking it is way they not if you were doing it as far as probably edibles or anything like that, but as far as uh inhaling it through getting a THC to smoke, yeah, it was it was like 1600 pounds in less than 15 minutes you had to smoke it in which is virtually impossible even being in a room yeah with oh, yeah, that definitely. much burning i was about to say you, there's you no would, way in you hell. wouldn't be able to stay in there long enough you'd have to leave that's taking the... into account that you're smoking absolutely 100 percent of all the thc that's located but, inside well, of that bud and there's no way in hell you're doing that just well, by smoking weed anyway yeah it's 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 all gonna now burn off. now that's not to say you're talking this is 2007 they're saying this now we're in 2023 it might be possible at this point with the way pot has been yeah they, elevated got, like, but, but, yeah. And shit. but that movie it hit a lot of great points oh, and yeah. it was a funny little what do you say like a B style yeah production for it yeah so you you had to take it for what it was but the information for that era was correct yeah and it, it was pretty informative I didn't know that the forefathers grew weed well you found out why it got illegal mm-hmm. because of a paper maker yeah he wanted to use trees and not hemp that was twice as cheap as twice as re- available you know it grow, the way it grows and everything it this was basically this is your big big uh, government type yeah. deals what that would be yeah. more on the... but yeah the movie ends up coming down to a raise where Doug sits down or not Doug Dave finally sits down and talks to his daughter about the spliff that she had and it wasn't hers the narrator told him <laughs> that it wasn't hers yeah that some was... dickhead put it in her purse yeah oh yeah from a party or yeah something. from a party or something he said he's like cause I'm not gonna lie right now I'm totally big pretty much smoke weed if you want to Oh, yeah, absolutely. By the way, I did look it up. Uh, it has not changed since then. Uh, the, uh, to overdose on marijuana, you would need to smoke around 1,500 pounds in 15 minutes. Okay. 100% of it. Impossible. Yeah. Smoke it if you want to. Yeah. Ain't nothing bad gonna happen. Um. But yeah, at the final skit of the movie, the uh, they legalized weed, and it was like 2030-something <laughs> on there. They legalized weed, and uh, Fun Onion stock soared. <laughs> of course it did. Oh, yeah. There you go. Profiting off the stones. It was like, it was like uh, all the good times was here to stay type attitude. Mm-hmm. That's great. <laughs> anyway, I rate the movie 420 out of 10. <laughs> uh, that's a good score. A good 420 score. <laughs> out of 10. That's hilarious. Can't beat that. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the recommendation, Dad. Yeah. It's it's not a movie for everyone, but it, it, if you like pop movies and some, it's all right. Get a little, grab you a, a joint or two and smoke it and watch it. It'd be all right. Yeah. And that is Bubba's Corner. We 
join Peter and Bob Skamek discussing the problem with the newest salesman, Humphrey, at the car lot. All right, Bob. You brought Humphrey on as the best salesman. So when the hell is he going to sell a car? What do you mean? He's doing okay. Doing okay? Maybe at eating donuts and drinking coffee, he hasn't sold shit. I think he's a lazy sack of shit, and I think you got duped into hiring him. Whoa, whoa. I'm telling you, man, he's one hell of a salesman. He's going to sell every car on this lot, you'll see, man. I have the utmost confidence in him. Oh, really? Would you like to place a bet on that? <laughs> what kind of bet? Your man Humphrey has to sell 70 cars on this 100 car lot in one week and he cannot have any help. I will send the other salesman home for the week. We got a deal? Um, well, I, uh, uh... What? You got no faith in your hiring decision? Or are you just a scaredy cat, big chicken? No, egg? man, listen. Bet's on. And when I, when I win, you'll work the car lot naked. Oh, okay. Then, when I win, you'll have to stand in the middle of the lot naked, smeared with shit. Deal? All right. Deal, asshole. Oh, crap. What did I do? Tune in next time to the Scamix to find out if Bob gets naked and covered in shit. Thank you for listening to Coffee Bar Stories. This is your host, Dad. This is Son. And I'm Bubba. And don't forget to check us out at ttzentertainment.com.